So on top of that, we'll install VirtualBox and uh, just go to the VirtualBox. Download for Windows, sorry, Windows 11. So we have for Windows, Mac, Linux, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I'll download for Windows 11. Okay. Save. And along with the VirtualBox, you need to install the uh, extension pack as well. Download the extension pack. That's fine. So, none Kishore, why we are using VirtualBox? Do we have any other VirtualBox? Yes. Microsoft do have Virtual PC. Again, you have to go to the Windows, you know, add and remove programs. So, Windows features, right? Windows uh, features turn and end off. This is an inbuilt virtualization software for Microsoft from Microsoft. Okay, here you have to enable Hyper V. Then you can straight away install the virtual guest operating system without uh, you know any other third party software. But I don't want to go in this way, rather, I want to go with the virtual box. So I have installed the virtual box. Hey, do we have anything else apart from this? Yes, we, VMware has you know VMware uh, workstation. KVM from Linux, so we have different different virtual license software. Let's let's ask uh, again ask uh, ChatGPT. What a virtualization we have in the market? Okay. So so vSphere is a type one from VMware. We have Microsoft Hyper V. We have KVM for Linux. Now Zen is for again is for Linux open source Oracle VirtualBox again open source we have Docker Docker is not a VirtualBox a container okay and uh, Citrix Zen server again is open source okay so uh, among these VirtualBox is something is famous and stable and moreover it's open source so I'll just go to my download folder okay double click and install the VirtualBox. It's a straightforward on screen, you know, installation. That means click next, 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 it will install. Guys, are you are you following with me? Yeah, Kishu. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, no, no. Okay. So my virtual box is already installed, so I'm just you know canceling this. Once virtual box is installed, what I have to do next? I need to install the extension pack. So why we need to install the extension? extension box we are giving additional functionalities to the virtual box that means you know drag and draw okay use my you know external if I put my USB to my laptop it should be display in my virtual machine as well so those kind of functionalities let's open the virtual box okay we have virtual box in order to install the virtual box you need to run the virtual box as a admin user okay so something like this virtual box then right click on this run as admin then only you can install the uh, what called um, extension pack click install and go to the particular location select that and install now i am running this virtual box as a normal user now I want to create uh, you know a system a Linux system or Windows system you know so here I'll be installing a Linux system so before installing Linux system I need to you know you need to know what exactly is Linux and what are the different types of Linux okay so Linux basically there are many different distros of Linux but they are you know grouped under four types so one is Debian based One is uh, Red Hat. Third one is uh, BSD Linux. Fourth one is Arch Linux. Arch Linux. So what exactly the difference then? So difference is very simple, guys. You know uh, these are different different communities. They have they come up with a different implementation of Linux. So how they develop? So they take the core of Linux. That's nothing but kernel. Core of Linux. Linux. There's nothing but kernel. Kernel alpha. So on top of that, they you know develop their own interfaces. Okay, Debian has a different interface in layman terms. Okay, Red Hat has a different interface. BSD, Arc, they have a different different interface. So there's only different. 
now you might be asking hey nandakishore since you're saying the core which is the heart of the linux is same among all these four categories of linux can i use the same command yes you can use whatever command you use in debian you can use in red hat bsd arch linux as well no change just the interface is different okay and if there is a case then why we are having different along with that you know basic command they have their own implementation as well say for example 60 percent basic 40 their own implementation depending on the company usage they you know uh, say for example tomorrow uh, microsoft is working on linux right they can come up with a, you know they can take the kernel they can develop their own linux they can call as microsoft linux linux as well so this is the thing now nankishore you know this is fine these are the categories of linux right now tell me which linux falls in in which category okay now if you ask me right so arch linux is a different category so you got all arch flavors of linux so let's see distros so these are all different different arch linux okay and arch linux is one of the difficult linux to use elementary os is you know debian based this is why they are including the arch i don't know but it's a debian based okay arch black arch you know and we have gouda linux so these are all arch based now coming to this i never you know worked in the arch linux guys okay bsd lines what is exactly bsd nothing but your macintosh mac systems so even apple has taken the linux kernel and they have developed their own open source called as mac os now what about Red Hat uh, Nankishore? Again, all these uh, uh, flip uh, categories of Linux having one as a server uh, operating system, another one is a client operating system. Let's check the Red Hat. Red Hat flavors of Linux distros. Okay. You have CentOS, you have Fedora, you know, you have many Rocky Linux, you know. So different, different CentOS we have. You know, CentOS is very famous after Red Hat. Uh, CentOS and Red Hat, they're both similar. The only difference is Red Hat, uh, in fact, Red Hat organization also, you know, work, all, uh, work on the CentOS. That means it is sponsored by Red Hat. The, then why can't we use Red Hat? Why we use only CentOS? So you can use CentOS, you can use Red Hat. But the advantage, advantage with Red Hat is when you use Red Hat, you know, uh, you have to pay for some kind of support, subscription. For example, you have some software which is not compatible with the Red Hat. That means you need to wait until unless they come up with some patch or some kind of thing. But if you go with the Red Hat, right, you can make some money, you can pay some money, you can take the support in solving that. So many of the uh, company servers, right, on the internet, they are Red Hat based. Okay. We have Fedora. This is a client uh, based operating system. That means you can install on your laptop as well. Okay. Uh, Oracle Linux, blah, 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 blah. This is all good, Nankisho. Now, what about the Debian based Linux? Debian based Linux. Okay, so we have Pop OS, we have Zurin, we have Kali Linux, we have MX Linux, Ubuntu. You know, these are all you know Debian based Linux. So now, now you might be getting an you know question. Hey, Nankisho, we have this many Linux. Can I create my own Linux? Yes, you can create your own Linux. You do one thing, right? You you know instead of writing the things from the scratch just take up one linux from this category say for example from debian i take ubuntu in ubuntu what i do is i remove some of the ubuntu parts i include my own parts okay so for example i'm a security person right so i take the ubuntu linux then i say none kishore linux then i then I install uh, nmap i install metasploit i install virtual box i install five six other software then i say none security distro then again do i need to charge for that no all Linux are and it falls under GPL. That means you can take Linux, you can use Linux, you can develop Linux. Again, you can forward that, but you cannot sell the Linux. Okay. Now, what is Kali Linux, guys? You know, since we are you know hearing more about Kali Linux as a security distro, same thing. Kali is a community where they have taken the Debian Linux, they have installed you know what we call a security software on that packages or software application, and they you know club everything as an ISO and they say this is a security distro from Kali Linux. Is it it? So now, question so now, is. Question is. Hello? Guys, uh, someone, yeah. someone is saying something. Yeah, Kishore, uh, like uh, in simple terms, like what is the difference between Debian, Arch, and all these uh, variants? See, in simple terms, there's no difference. Uh, you know, uh, local, um, uh, Cyan. 
So the only difference is like you know some uh, things are you know uh, say for example if you take Arch Linux right as I told you when Linux came into picture it was very bit difficult to install and Linux you know many of the people they feel Linux as a drug because even I'm a big fan of Linux but uh, my go to distro is Mint I mostly work with the Mint so what happens is this Arch Linux still they're following the same kind of implementation the tough kind of implementation. But when you come about when you talk about the Debian or Red Hat, right? They have you know the latest feature, you know, easy to use, you know, uh, kind of interfaces. Now, so to the, it's 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 like more about the user interface. Exactly, yeah. more okay. of the user interface, and not only that. So, for example, uh, I am installing, you know, my I am releasing my own distro called Non Security Distro. That means if I see tomorrow the latest uh, kind of uh, software, right? I can push the software as update. That means update also matters. Right. Now coming to the Mac OS BSD Linux, again as I told you, the Mac OS is very much integrated with the hard drive, you know, hard uh, hardware. Okay? Only Mac OS. That makes the Mac OS very secure. And coming to the Red Hat, as I told you, Red Hat, you know, the servers, especially the servers, Red Hat RHEL6, RHL7, these kind of things, right? They do provide services. They don't sell the software, but they provide services for helping you. They charge money. Now, this is all fine, but you know, people who are migrating from Windows to Linux, Debian is an easy one. Now, all the Linux right. are easy, but Debian is much easy. Did you got the difference? Right, right, got it. Okay, but you know, again, coming to your question, there's much, nothing much different since they all use the same kernel. You know, you can use the same commands. So, for example, uh, I want to use least command, LST. If I want to use uh, change directory CD, password pwd you know present working directory these kind of commands it works in all the linux you right okay so now you know what exactly is kali linux right yep okay now do we have security distros of linux yes we do have many security distros of linux okay linux Okay, so these are different different security distros of Linux, and uh, we have you know, Kodachi. I never worked on this. We got Cubes. I'll tell you what is Cubes. Very important, guys. Okay, Kali Linux we use for pen testing, and you know many other purpose. We have uh, Trails again, very important, guys. Trails I tell you, Black Arch. I told you Arch uh, Linux we use for pen testing, and Parrot again based on Debian. So these are you know different different kind of Linux. Now one thing I really like about Linux is Linux is robust man. What exactly does it mean? So, for example, I am working, you know, I installed Linux in my system and I'm using as a normal user. All of a sudden, I want to convert my Linux into a server. Okay. With a few commands, I can convert my Linux into a server. Once the server, you know, purpose is done, I can remove the server. Just with a few commands. We learn all those commands. Not only that, okay. Uh, as I told you, security of Linux is depends on your, you know, on your own hand. That means, you know, if you want 10% security, you can make 10%. So something like anonymous, anonymous is something like you, know, you are hiding yourself, complete hiding. So real-time hackers, what they do is they use, you know, anonymous operating systems that this, that the uh, operating system based on Linux, completely based on Linux. What exactly uh, those operating system, you know, do is they will hide your fingerprint. When I say fingerprint, they will hide your, you know, browser data. It will not allow. Uh, you know uh, the ISP to collect your browser data it will not allow any of your system information to go to the third party so that when you do a hack right the investigation team should not come back to you they should not trace you back so in that case what are the supporting you know operating systems we have we have trails so this is you know uh, trails is one of the operating system you can install but again you know it is always best to install trails on a CD-ROM or ISO image so earlier what the what the hackers they used to do is they used to run the linux from the cd rom itself instead of installing on the computer once the work is done they will break the cd that's it okay trails we can use for anonymous and we can use you know uh, cubes also we can use for anonymous and we have hunix hunix is my favorite again we can use for anonymous so that means we are hiding all the information. That means we are completely becoming a ghost on the internet and we are doing our hacking activities. This is one, you know, one uh, 
flavor of flan eggs you can say now another one is hey nand kishore you know what i want um, more or less you know focused on the mobile pen testing right i want to you know i want a operating system which target mobile pen testing yes we do have number one you take kali linux or ubuntu or some other debian linux you can install all your mobile pen testing tools which you know then become a mobile pen testing distro no no i don't want to do i just want to go for a ready to use distro and we have two max i think two max some kind of you know uh, mobile pen testing mobile testing linux distros so we have you know i think uh, distros ethical hacking so i think uh, two max is something is there which is you know more or less confined to the web uh, mobile pen testing we have samurai which is totally targeted about web application pen testing and we have o cent linux which you know uh, this is a c samurai web web testing framework this particular is based on debian again you know it contain all the tools which are you know targeted towards the web application only web application so in the same way uh, two max two max two max uh, i don't know man so one you know one linux distro for monitoring purpose you know the same way we have different different thing. bug track bug track i really don't know what is this i never tried this but again if i want anonymous anonymous so not anonymous osent osent is nothing but open source intelligent that means we collect the information which is available on the internet which is ethical which is legal so we have you know that kind of linux as well not not all this one got it guys what am i to say so the important question is nan kishore you know uh, these many linux so how can i learn so don't worry guys all these different different flavors right they fall majority in debian majority say you know majority in debian then followed by red hat blah 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 that means you learn one linux you should be able to use any other linux very easily okay the same thing we are going to do with kali and parrot now uh, why kali and why parrot we have many security distro we got garuda we got you know black arch we got blah 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 again we are not here to learn linux we are here uh, to do our pen testing and you know we'll be focusing more time on the pen testing rather than linux in order to do the pen testing we need to know a little bit of linux which we'll be learning in fact more than a little bit okay and uh, among the security distros kali and parrot these are the most popular linux kali linux and parrot linux now the question is nan kishore you know since these two things got the same kernel right and they both are based on debian then what's the different yes you can use the same command same thing copy paste you can command between the two operating system what's the different the different the only different is kali is totally focused on security but parrot do have different versions one is for security one is for home purpose you know let me show you that and second thing is the updates so sometimes parrot will throw you know or push more updates sometimes kali will you know push more updates third one thing third one thing is tools some you know some kali linux don't have much tools some parrot have more tools and fourth and you know very important thing is in time you know when i'm doing my pen testing engagement right i do have virtual machine a uh, two for kali linux two for parrot what happens is i often face this issue sometimes some tools they don't work properly in kali linux probably i need to configure or need to compile the source code blah 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 which take time again i need to you know test r and d all these things but the same tool work perfectly on kali you know parrot os so that is the reason i use both the distros you know in my real time so see we have security distro which is for pen testing and ethical hacking whatever you want to name we have portable this is you know we can install on your you know local iot or mobile phone kind of things we have you know privacy distro i think probably you know anonymous star kind of thing customizable freedom blah blah just read this guys but again we are very much interested in security distros where is security yeah we have a home we have security we have cloud we have raspberry pi we have you know architect edition but we are interested in this security distro okay so latest release is may 1 2023 and uh, 5.3 and the distro name is uh, electro ara this is a distro name so let's download this i want iso image because i want to install on my own no guys you know i want to go with uh, so let me save this okay no i want to go with uh, um, since i already installed virtual box 
can I go with the virtual box uh, you know kind of thing yes you can download this and just import the upline you should be fine okay what is the difference between an appliance and ISO ISO is nothing but a CD-ROM wherein you install step by step when it comes to the appliance right appliance is a fully installed configured software there's a virtual machine which is pushed on the internet you are basically downloading a virtual machine which is fully configured you know, fully updated just all you have to do is just import the appliance that should be fine clear and even Kali I do the same thing download Kali okay we have different different you know we have we can directly download the virtual uh, machine but I don't want this I want a live boot because I want to install okay 164 bit yeah this should be fine save it will take some time guys so are we clear up to here yes question no yeah question is why we you know why don't we use windows 11 and why we use only linux for pen testing engagement anyone Uh, because uh, Kishore, Windows is a proprietary OS, so there are a lot of limitations. Exactly. So it's a proprietary OS, that means a closed system. That means everything is dependent. But when it comes to Linux, it's open source, that means you can literally do whatever you want to do with the Linux. And can I install Windows uh, uh, applications on Linux? Yes, you can no, install. Sure. You can install. Yeah. Okay. So there's a flex flexibility we have in Linux. So this is about you know a little bit interaction about Linux. Now we will go to the virtual box again. Okay. Now I want to install a virtual machine. Before that, virtual machines are very much similar to your normal machine. As we discussed in the morning, right? In order to build a desktop or laptop, I need a hardware. So what I do is I go here, I click a system. I say this system is say you know uh, say my Kali Linux box. I can say a desktop one. Desktop one. Okay, where I want to. Uh, save I'll save in C drive I have only one drive by the way okay okay let me let me let me do a step up yeah, that's fine okay now I will include my ISO image so when you are installing operating system on your desktop you should be having a CD-ROM or pen drive right the same way I have these are virtual CD-ROM you can say one that is downloaded the software I'll give the software here okay uh, let me stop this right this must stop this this will uh, download faster okay uh, for the time being I'll keep it like this then what kind of operating system I'm going to install I'm going to install Linux which version of Linux as I told you we have Debla, you know Debian, Red Hat, you know blah blah blah. But uh, my Kali Linux is Debian based. I'll go with the Debian based. You know the latest one is Bullseye 64. That should be fine. Okay. Next. Okay. How much amount of RAM I can provide? I have 8 GB of RAM, but you know for this you know uh, I can say 2 GB. Uh, Linux again, guys. One of the best thing about Linux is Linux is super fast and and you know you can uh, run Linux on a 128 MB system as well. So here I'm giving 3 GB of RAM. Uh, can you say you know 3 G uh, sorry, 2 GB of RAM? That should be fine. And how many processors? I have October. There's eight processors. I'll give two processors. Okay. Next, I need to configure the hard drive. The hard drive is 20 GB. Okay. Let me give it as 40 GB hard drive. So now, now Kishore, you know you have a 500 uh, you know GB hard drive. So that means you are blocking 40 GB here in this hard drive. Is it fine? So fact is. You know this uh, hard drive is not allocated in one go it says the maximum is 40 GB but for time being I'm using only 1 GB that means use only 1 GB but you know the size can increase up to maximum of 40 GB okay so I say 40 GB that's fine and we don't touch you know do this uh, two options I'll tell you why already I have uh, a, 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 a sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt uh, could you 
sorry to interrupt you could you please uh, repeat this part i didn't get it so what i mean to say is see how much uh, hard drive i have in my system i have around 5 you know uh, 500 gb hard drive okay right but you know out of this 500 gb i can use 417 almost right. 60 gb is already occupied by my windows and other applications right right out of 417 i am blocking 40 gb okay okay that okay. means what will be the remaining uh, space on my hard drive 417 minus 40 how much is going to be it's Roughly, going to be 377 gb yeah 373 gb isn't it yeah yeah 370 gb yeah roughly that much okay 375 uh, 73 gb uh, sorry yeah so again if you see this particular thing right it will allocate the space but you know is a dynamic space that means if my linux uh, kali linux is using only 2 gb or 10 gb so it will take 10 gb out of this 40 gb so straight away it will not block 40 gb it says yes make a note this system is having a 40 gb okay maximum uh, storage but right now i'm using only 1 gb that means i use only, i block only 1 gb that's it right like uh, even after installing the application software it can take up a maximum size of 40 gb yes if the application yeah. software is only 20 gb it will take only 20 gb right okay so you know advance is not doing it's doing you know dynamically when it requires it is increasing now as i told you like you know you download the appliances in that case you need to select this you need to add this particular hard drive uh, virtual hard drive and again we'll be doing that when we install our vulnerable machines next okay this is entire you know uh, kind of my hardware as a finish okay now i have my first virtual machine ready i'll go to the settings the first thing what we have to do is we have to remove the things which we don't use okay the first one general under general we can name and you know we have type of operating system version under advance you know this is drag and drop and uh, cut copy paste as a bidirectional so this is possible when you install the extension pack description you can write this is you know uh, kali linux for training okay so user will be password is to or five the same thing i you know uh, configured in the lab also so i am for information i want to do disk encryption i can do the disk encryption but i don't want to do it okay system info right so again here my you know base memory is 2 gb i can increase decrease i have assigned two processors and i uh, you know if you have a gpu you can use the gpu but again you know for the kishor by base mem by base memory do we mean uh, mean the ram sorry base memory means ram yes okay yeah okay okay since you know floppy is a you know, legacy thing we are not using floppy so i'm just disabling floppy i don't want floppy okay so i'll be using yeah. cd rom because i told you iso is a virtual cd rom so i will be configuring the iso file this fine and these are straight forward you can go through this then display again no if i want a remote display i can configure i can give the port number with which i can take the remote display of this as well so if you want to record the uh, virtual machine uh, activities you can do and you can record which i don't want again under storage as i told you i gave one uh, hard drive which is 40 gb right now actual size is 2 2 mb only 2 mb out of 40 gb it is using okay once right. i assign the iso image you can see the iso image here as well okay since this is a virtual machine right i am not using any audio i don't want this so i will disable this so now networking again i'll discuss for time being let's uh, you know stick to bridge network okay serial port is a old technology again we are not using usb if you want you can use if you don't want you can uh, disable as well it will give a warning nothing will happen your vm will work just a warning if you don't want you can enable shared folder what exactly shared folder means there are two types of sharing one is sharing from the virtual machine to another virtual machine second one is sharing from your host this is my host operating system windows 11 and this will be my guest operating system so how can i share is uh, you know i can create a folder in c drive okay i say virtual machine i say shared folder shared folder now i will share this folder i give sharing permission so go to properties sharing okay share everyone 
I want to share with everyone. Okay, I click and add. Okay, everyone read. No, I want to give a read right. That's a share. Admin password to commit the changes. Now, yes. This is my share folder. Now I can share this folder uh, as a raw folder on my uh, say what is that virtual machine. So I'll go here. I add the shared folder here. So generally we don't do all these things. I'm just showing you the shared folder. Okay and user interface blah blah these are normal things man. so generally we you know play around with the system as well as uh, storage and network so my hardware is very much ready all i need to do is i need to install the operating system okay so we are we on this okay it's almost downloaded yeah just one more minute unlike windows in windows we have files folders directory partitions here i have only one partition there's a c drive okay in linux everything is a file including the commands say for example in windows i am using uh, say ping command this is a command in windows but in linux ping is also a file that means there is script written for this activity and the name of the script is ping so remember in linux everything is a file there is no concept of partitions few more seconds and uh, we are done with this okay this is done let me let me download the pirate as well now pirate security vision down over the ISO now my Kali is uh, downloaded. Again, I'll go to the settings. Okay, I'll go to the storage. I click on the CD drive. Now I assign, I I insert or assign. You can say whatever you want to say. You say choose a disk. It's an ISO disk. Okay, download and this is ISO. That is it. Okay. That means now my desktop is ready. That means hardware is ready. I have kept the operating system, you know, CD in the CD ROM. Now I need to install. That means start. Okay. While it gets started, right? As I told you, everything is a Linux. Uh, sorry, everything in Linux is a file, right? Now we need to understand the file structure of Linux. Okay. One option is I know what I'm doing. Second option is go to the Google and search. Third option is we have ChatGPT, right? Let's ask ChatGPT. Okay. Um, tell me about Linux or Debian. D e b i n l i n x. Again, all Linux same file structure. Just you know few changes here and there, but ninety percent same. Debian Linux file S T R U C T U R E structure. Okay, let me stop this and uh, okay, I'll go. Well, I guess let me actually here. Double format. So, guys, how is ChatGPT? Is it a uh, simple, easy, making your job easy? Absolutely, Kishu. And believe me, guys, when you are doing a pen testing, right? Uh, chat GPT is very good in generating uh, reverse shells, you know, all these things. So, guys, now this is the this file is structure the of Linux. Someone is saying something, please go ahead. Hello? Hello? Fine. Thank you, sir. Yes. Someone is saying something? That's fine. So let's stick to this particular diagram. So this is the root. Under this, you know, file, uh, say kind of directory, you have all these directories. Guys, please turn off your mobile or code mute. 
okay so under this folder you have all these folders okay you have been dev ect usr home blah 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 now do we need to know this file structure 100 percent yes why i'll tell you because you now if you want to master linux master this file structure and is very simple with the time you'll be knowing so when i install linux right so just like windows when i install linux i got my network uh, you know configuration i got my disk configuration everything right all the configuration will go under etc okay so slash bin so in linux we have two types of command commands for normal user commands for super user in linux admin is called a super user or root okay so all the normal user commands you will find under bin okay all the super user commands or admin commands you will find in sbin okay your temporary folders will hold all the temporary files slash var this is one of the important directory because it contains all the log files so now you might be asking me hey nan kishore system wide logs right can we uh, where can we see that yes you can see system wide logs in log folder slash var slash log slash syslog it will contain all the system logs now you install a web application web application logs will be here again it will create a folder called web application under that you will find your logs again you install a ftp server a file server or dns server every server one folder will create and under the folder you will find all the logs we will be doing log analysis thoroughly on linux which is very much equal in windows okay and home folder this for home folder under home folder you will find all the users say for example uh, let me go here c drive okay if i if i want to compare linux and c so c drive is nothing but you are this one and this is c drive you have all these folders the same way you have all these folders here okay so under this you have users this is your home directory in windows i have three users arjun eagle and public in the same way after you know uh, uh, linux installation if i create a user all the users will be under this home folder so once i go inside the user right say for example i want to go inside the user again so i can see my desktop document download video you know photos everything all those folders you can find under respective user folders so etc is etc is for configuration bin is for normal user commands sbin is for super user commands lib is for library files home is for home folder temp is for you know temporary file slash var is for logs or variable files you can say okay only this uh, this folders yeah these are the you know um, important folders we do have many folders but these are the important ones now let's go to chat gpt what it says okay say same var is a variable data this is a logs user this is you know uh, under usr you will find all third party application for example you install uh, say wine wine is this uh, application which facilitate to install windows application on linux okay so if you install linux own software it will install straight away but if you install third party softwares the third party softwares will be installed under usr folder at the rest respective configuration file be under etc okay uh, srv sbin root okay uh, one good thing about linux is linux is a super uh, secure by default that means uh, by default installation it is a super secure so that means the admin will have a separate home folder so that home folder is nothing but slash root for all the other other users a folder will be created under home but not for the admin admin is slash root that's it opt for optional packages this is for processes what kind of processes are running and uh, media is for you know uh, if you have a usb or you know uh, hard, external hard drive you will find under media lib for library blah 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 and slash boot is for boot files so for example you are struggling with your linux you know linux is not booting what you have to do once you log into linux just go to the boot folder and see what is the issue with the boot process guys clear about file structure of linux hello it's clear yes yes okay now see uh, one beauty thing about linux is you know i can use linux which is called live linux that means as i told you uh, you know we have uh, uh, cubes we got trails wherein we install the operating system uh, or the cd drive that means we are using the operating system from the cd drive same thing we can do in kali as well okay capture let me enter 
that means i'm not installing linux but i am using linux live from the iso image itself that means my traces will be very less and one more thing guys you know once you started using linux right initially probably for a week or 10 days you find a little bit of diff you know uh, difficulties once you know i don't think so you know you have chat gpt you know on your side you don't find any difficulties but once you started liking terminal right you will not touch windows or uh, linux terminal is like a drug okay it will take a little bit of time to install so meanwhile any doubt still here hello okay uh, one a few quick things about chat gpt guys chat gpt can you know create a pdfs they can create a you know emails in fact you know i write many of the emails using chat gpt uh, again you know uh, do not copy and paste your personal or sensitive information chat gpt because uh, behind the chat gpt there are humans who has to validate the data that means they will take your data they will work on your data so all generic data you can use in chat gpt not sensitive data so you can you know uh, create a code for a html page you know website you can do many things with the chat gpt guys so you have some prompts here uh, where is this prompts in the same way you will have different different prompts on the internet just go and see and, you know chat gpt can be a coach so you can ask uh, chat gpt to provide a gym routine um, a gym routine to reduce weight my weight is 120 kgs again it's not my weight i'm just saying this okay it will you know it can uh, work you you know it will uh, work as a personal coach many things you can do with the chat gpt but again uh, you should you know you should uh, know the technology you should know then only you can use uh, chat gpt in a good manner no i'm completely you know i want to depend on chat gpt means you will not learn guys in the same way we have you know bard is from a uh, google uh, b a r d okay bard at google .com. again this is a you know chat gpt of google you can say in the same way we have try bard okay uh, okay i agree again i am learning the ai tools so my primary tool is chat gpt i know a little bit of uh, mid journey so i'm working on different different tools and uh, from from your group one of the girl is working with me on different different things so whenever i find some interesting ai tools i forward the link to her she's working on it so just tell me uh, say some query guys any prompt okay one difference between a broad uh, bard and chat gpt is bard is having all the latest information and uh, bard is having internet connectivity as well but uh, chat gpt only information up to 2021 and uh, no internet connectivity that means it will not get you the websites okay so let me take the same query from here So if you know chat gpt you can use uh, google bard as well not only google bard we have one more thing called bing search okay uh, bing search yeah. click on this chat okay open in So one uh, challenge with the Bing search is it is you know it will open in uh, Microsoft Edge only. So we have chat, and uh, Bing search is using Chat GPT 4.0 version. Now if you want that, uh, you can pay twenty dollars per month, but here you can use it for free. 
same query I read here. So let's see, and it says you know, uh, Google bot, right? No, not this one. Google bot is the one. Okay, it says. So these are the things you have to do on day one, day two, and repeat. Blah 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 blah. But again, this uh, information is uh, uh, again, it is learning. That means whatever information we are providing, it is learning on that. If you go with this information, you might uh, get advantage, or you might you know uh, disadvantage as well. So just use it wisely. So it's saying you know it's saying something you know, Jim routine is giving me. See, chat GPT 4.0. Okay, so chat GPT is not our uh, uh, kind of thing, but uh, again, we need to use it because we need to be you know uh, aware of the latest technology as well. Right? Let's go here. So, this is my Kali Linux, which I am running from the ISO image itself. So, I can you know browse the internet, I can do all my activities without installing. Now, if I want to install, I can install this as well. So what is the advantage of uh, you know this particular feature is before installing Linux if you want to you know uh, get yourself familiar with the Linux you can use this feature and you know you can uh, try working for you know some days then if you feel comfortable then you can install the Linux okay now let me restart then I'll install the Kali Linux Still, we have 20 more minutes and uh, 20 more minutes, and uh, we'll install this Kali Linux. Then we will uh, close for the day. Okay, we have start installer. So, whenever you are installing any virtual machine, right, just try to turn off the uh, network. If you don't turn off, what will happen is it will, you know, uh, while installing itself, it will get the upgrades and the installation will be uh, slow. It will take good amount of time. I'm a new person, so I'll go with the, you know, default installation. If I want to customize, I can customize as well, right? So first one, select a language. I say go with English. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, select your location. I'm in India, right? So I'll go with India. Continue. Okay, keyboard style American English. That's fine. It is installing. Earlier it was a bit difficult, guys. You know, again, it's easy. It's not that difficult, but yes, you know, you need to understand. We'll give you the you know uh, what it has to do, description, what you, what should be your option. So it was something like an interactive kind of thing. Now it's all most all automated. Now I'll show you my system resources. Look at CPU utilization. 48, 16, you know. And look at the RAM, 8 GB. So my personal experience with the uh, virtualization is you you know virtualization works perfectly when you have more than 8 GB of RAM. So for example, 16 GB is superb. Because Windows 11 itself, you know, it will take minimum of 8 GB man. Because when you uh, when the Windows 11 is quiet, you are not doing any work. So it will use around 4 to 5 GB. But if you run some application, easily it will go to 7 to 8 GB. Guys, are you with me? Yes, Kishu. Okay. Yes, Kishu. Yes, so, so far what we have discussed is, uh, let's go to our thing.
so we have worked on the chat gpt so so a little bit motherboard ram hard drive cpu cooling system different ports network card we have not uh, you know uh, not completed right okay it's only do and time that's fine so network card is not completed hdmi port usb port uh, is not completed bios is done tpm and uh, hms hsm is done drivers guys this is very much important right so for example uh, let me tell you a little bit about drivers you have your hardware you you know you want to prepare your desktop or laptop so laptop or desktop you got uh, you know and you install uh, the cpu ram and everything and then you install the operating system so how come the operating system know like you know, this is a cpu i have to use cpu and this is a ram i have to use ram this is a hard drive i need to store information because operating system itself is an application right in order to facilitate that drivers comes into picture the driver drivers will tell the operating system hey operating system I am a hard drive driver. That means my purpose is to store information and to transmit information. Hey, operating system, I am a RAM driver. Okay, my purpose is to load you in the operating system and load the operating system as well as, you know, run the applications in the RAM. CPU does the same thing. Like you now, I do the calculations, and uh, we have network card drivers. It will say, Hey, I am a network card driver, so I can do the network communi uh, communication feasibility. In the same way we have dvd we have usb we have hdmi we have, we have monitor drivers screen drivers you know touchpad drivers keyboard drivers so all you know these things are there so how can you for example in um, i was working on one fine day and all of a sudden my keyboard or touchpad is not working what should i do you have to go to your device manager first okay So go to the device manager. Okay. Now my touchpad is not working. Then there is nothing but human interface device. Here you look for your touchpad, whatever it may be, and right click on that and you know properties, go to the properties, and here you can update your drivers. Go to the drivers, you can update the drivers, you can search for the drivers. That's how you install the drivers. So all the drivers you will be finding under device manager. Audio video, I am unable to hear my sound, then speaker. I, I cannot communicate, my other person is not listening, there is a mic. My battery is draining forward, it's a battery. Okay, my fingerprint is not working, the biometric. My Bluetooth is not working, Bluetooth drivers. So this is all about drivers. Again, drivers is nothing but a piece of software, you know. Everything is a software, guys. So that's about drivers. Uh, we have discussed the operating system, basic troubleshooting at uh, hardware level. I have discussed if the RAM is wrong, what kind of signal it will give. Desktop, laptop, smartphones. Guys, uh, one quick thing, right? Uh, desktop, laptops, or smartphones, IoT device, they all called as you know smart devices. So, in one uh, one sentence, if I want to conclude, uh, smart device is something which get an IP and communicate with the internet. There's only you know uh, if uh, chat GPT let's ask chat GPT what it says. Hey, define define uh, smart devices. So guys, one quick thing, right? A definition is perception. Your way of thinking is nothing but your definition. So hundred people, for example, in our group we have ten people. Ten people will have different uh, level of understanding. They can produce the same uh, you know understanding and they can call it as a uh, definition so for example if i ask alakya to write you know uh, a definition about computer she will write something that's uh, her own definition that's a, her own perception so one definition you know we cannot say only you know her definition is right his definition is right so what exactly works on the internet is widely accepted the people who accept more say for example out of 10 people five people are accepting or Alekia's definition, that means the definition we can consider. So this is all about smart devices guys. So simple thing with uh, IP and internet is a smart device. So where are we? Are we? Okay, network configuration. Now I will turn on this network. Continue. Uh, that's fine. Configure network manual. No, we try network configuration one more time.
Okay, I want to give a host name. That's fine. Kali is fine. Host name. Domain is this fine. Okay, username. So I'll say user as eagle. As I told you, a folder will be created under a home folder. Okay, that's fine. And password will be T O R five. T O R five. So meanwhile guys we have 10 more minutes so if you want to ask any doubts uh, you know if you don't understand anything please let me know I will clarify. Please guides unmute yourself. Hey, hi, no doubts. No doubts. No doubts. So uh, I know few of the people and few of the people uh, I'm interacting for the first time. So please guys, if you uh, know a few things, right? Number one, if you don't understand anything, let me know. You know, if you want me to explain something again, I don't mind in doing so. And uh, third thing is like, you know, um, say you want me to change my learning, you know, uh, teaching uh, style. I'll definitely do that. If you don't, uh, if you're not okay with uh, the present teaching, teaching style, that means using chat GPT, using Google and, you know, um, uh, like you know, uh, composing the courses on the fly and I do not have time um, to prepare a course material or slides please excuse for that <coughs> so that's all guys uh, you know uh, once this is done your Linux uh, is installed so this is about uh, the device manager Then virtualization, we have discussed almost all virtual, you know, um, kind of things in the virtualization. But we'll be discussing, you know, how to take the backup of a virtual system. Then a snapshot we'll be discussing. Installation uh, configuration we are doing now. Network configuration, very important guys, I will teach you tomorrow. Common configurations, I have already showed you. You know, you can remove some of the hardware, disable some of the hardware. Virtual in, uh, box installation, done. What, what is virtual box done? BIOS settings on virtual box as I told you you need to enable the BIOS so virtualization from the BIOS so when your system starts keep pressing F12 you will get into the BIOS depending on the model of your laptop then go to the BIOS and enable the virtualization different operating system we have discussed types of virtualization type 1 type 2 discussed purpose discussed what is virtualization also discussed now Windows yes I have completed few of the topics in Windows I agree in Linux tomorrow whole day will be working only on the Linux, probably one hour to two hours we'll be spending on Linux and on the network the reason is uh, see um, on the internet you will find lots of websites on uh, in the websites uh, 70 to 80 percent of the website they work on Linux so why we need to know uh, no Linux and uh, why we need to know all these things now Kishore is simple thing right say for example uh, you know I'm here I'm testing a, uh, you know I'm pen testing a uh, site for uh, say um, Elon Musk Tesla or Tesla.com okay I need to know the text tag so okay I know the text tag but uh, if I don't understand the text tag then what is the point that means what is the operating system okay what is a uh, you know application server what is a web server what is the database this one will be doing everything in the internet you know we'll be discussing you know web server blah 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 you know domain name ISP pad net all these things internet and network okay these things when you know these kind of things then you can channelize hey these guys are using telnet that means it runs on port 23 clear text protocol i can attack hey they have this dscp runs on port number 68 and 69 right then i can say yes you know i can uh, install a rogue dhcp server dns zone transfer i can do port number 53 for secure unsecure udp from 53 so those kind of things I know port numbers, many of the port numbers, you know, it's not one day uh, kind of thing, guys. I've been working on in this field for more than 10 years. Now, if you have your fundamentals properly, believe me, guys, you can literally play in any of the domain. Now, one of the funny thing, right, uh, let it install. One of the funny thing is, I'll show you different, different, you know, job roles. Let's start with chat GPT, okay. 
so what is the job description description of an id support support guy okay so it says you know uh, you need to install the software so again instant management is not a big deal i think i'll give a small uh, you know introduction to that installation user account management is creating deleting you know blocking the user system monitoring and maintenance will be doing that again <coughs> and some other you know xyz kind of things if i ask the same thing right now um, job cri pt and description of a server admin this one will be discussing tomorrow so the reason is you know uh, security is not only one domain right you know when you have a complete knowledge then you can be a good you know security expert when you don't know how to configure a server what server you know uh, serve what purpose what can be a possible vulnerabilities in the particular server so then you know uh, you cannot literally figure out so for example uh, i see the request of a you know web application it says you no know, something with the request you can say yes these guys are using iis server this are, that means they are using all microsoft related products okay so this is server admin right again same thing for network admin so we'll be doing it support server admin network admin then cyber security expert so guys uh, we have four more minutes and it will take some time so i will uh, leave that let it install so meanwhile if you have any doubts you can ask if not we can drop hello nothing from my side kishan nothing from my side no question no question so so guys uh, how many people we have we have only five no no actually 12 people joined uh, uh, many people left in the last minute yeah this fine guys so guys again no, no, we have 12 people we had 12 people in the last minute after the session many people left that is fine guys no worries okay so again guys you need to understand i am uh, you know uh, spending some money on this so my intention is very simple i do see many of the people in the company in the projects you know they don't have proper uh, knowledge it's not something they don't learn the only thing is they don't have resources whether they don't have a laptop or they don't have you know money to get a proper training they join the project and it is a uh, it is the duty of the manager to train them properly but uh, we know what kind of managers we have in the projects and in this you know many of people i uh, have trained you guys here Uh, except uh, sai sai again you know a little bit of training i'm doing again i'll train him sayan you know you are started today and kumar is a new to uh, new to me so intention is very simple i'm providing you everything for free i have to buy an isp i need to buy office 365 subscription for a month i need to rent a laptop so that means i am investing something so expectation is very simple learn these guys you don't get this training anywhere from this scratch i will uh, you know I'll show you the document how you prepare the sows rfps how you you know uh, how you communicate uh, to get the projects network pen testing then mobile uh, web pen testing then mobile pen testing then api but again i don't want to go for the mobile and api this is a different thing but up to web i will be teaching you okay so my expectation is very simple i want you guys to complete uh, learn it properly and you can ping me you have my number so ping me and if you need any help in understanding or anything let me know okay okay sir yeah, definitely okay. so guys okay. let's conclude this training today okay. thank you okay